Welcome to another episode of Full Ride, the college recruiting podcast. This is your recruiting coach, Quito Delgado. Uh, and every single week, the goal of Full Ride is to educate, equip, and empower our student athletes and parents to take control of their college recruiting journey. And as always, we are powered a.k.a. sponsored by You Recruit You, uh, which I am the founder of. And if you'd like to learn more about You Recruit You, uh, our mission and, and really how we help uh, families navigate college recruiting, I invite you to head on over to yourecruitu.com. That is the letter U and then recruit the letter U. Dot com. But I'm excited today, really, really excited because I have a good friend of mine and former rival, high school rival, uh, joining me. His name is Malik Nichols, and we're going to get into it. Uh, you're going to quickly know how we get to um, how we know one another, but I'll just kind of give you a recap quickly, uh, high level. We played against each other in high school back in 1997, so I'm dating myself a little bit. That's all good, actually. I'm I'm proud to say I'm 41 years old, but um, we played uh, against one another in basketball um, back in the day, and we played in the, the championship game versus one another, and I'll let him tell you uh, whose team won uh, the championship game, and then we also, and now it's for basketball, but then we also, we didn't go against each other in football, uh, but we both were named uh, to the, you know, the our area's all-star uh, team, our senior year. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, I forgot to mention, we are both from um, Schenectady, New York, or he's from Albany, I'm from Schenectady, which is located in upstate New York. Uh, so we go all the way back to our high school days. And uh, so Malik ended up uh, playing college football, much like myself. Uh, but what makes him his story a little bit unique is now uh, he has a son who recently went through the college recruiting process uh, who um, actually plays for Michigan. Uh, his name is uh, Tariq Black. So for you Michigan Wolverine fans, you should um, you probably know that name. And if you follow college football on the Big Ten, you know that name. And uh, you also know that he's actually currently in the transfer portal. Um. I'm really, really excited for him because he actually is going to graduate from Michigan in three years. Uh, He's going to transfer. He's going to have two more years of eligibility left. Uh, So we're definitely, at least I am, um, extremely happy for Tariq. Uh, I wish him nothing but the best of luck. And by the way, no, we are not going to be breaking any news (laughs) on this podcast uh, regarding, you know, where he is going to transfer. You're going to have to find out just like everybody else because, honestly, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but all kidding aside, Malik, uh, you know, again, he's my age. So we, we kind of reminisce on, um, how college recruiting was like when we went through the process. Um, but then he also, uh, we fast forward to, you know, really how it is now. And Malik gave some, um, some great advice for student athletes, but he also, uh, gives outstanding advice for you current parents who are, in the same shoes he was in just three, four years ago uh, with his son. Um, But before we get to uh, Malik, uh, earlier this week, it was Super Tuesday. And no, don't, (laughs) don't, don't uh, get me wrong. We're not going to talk politics on, on, uh, on full ride, but it was Super Tuesday. And uh, whenever anything significant happens, I always try to relate it to college recruiting. I'm like, how can I flip this and to make it relatable to uh, college recruiting? And again, without making this political, I think it's a great story, though. uh, And it definitely relates to college recruiting. Anyone who's been following the race of the Democratic primary knows that Joe Biden was left for dead. Uh, You know, his political, you know, campaign, if you will, for presidency was left for dead two weeks ago. Right. And then what happened? A number of things happened, kind of aligned for him, right? He won. Well, he first he got an endorsement 
from a, a well-known congressman in in South Carolina. And then he just destroyed the competition and he won his first, you know, primary uh, race in South Carolina. And he did so in such a dominating fashion. What ended up happening is two of his competitors, they dropped out, you know, his nearest competitors, Klobuchar and Buttigieg. But then they also endorse him, right? Um, and I'm just kind of speeding up here. And then he goes into Super Tuesday, which was earlier this week. And again, if you follow the race, he ends up winning 10 of the 14 states. And now it's pretty much considered a, you know, a toss up between him and Bernie Sanders to win the, the nomination. So why am I telling you this? Why should you care, student athletes? Because I'm telling you right now, college recruiting can literally be the same way that's going on with Joe Biden. It's all about momentum. It's about creating that momentum, right? And it just, it doesn't take much for you to do it. You may, maybe you go to one junior day and you destroy, you know, you do really well. You compete really well. You compete hard. You get the attention of that one coach and boom, you got a scholarship offer. Um, you, you do really well on your SAT. And before you weren't a qualifier, but now you're, you've qualified. And now the offers start to, 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 um, to come in. Your high school coach or, and Malik's going to tell this story in a little bit, you know, an opponent. So, you know, the team you're going against, their coach endorses you, recommends you to a, another college program. And now that school is, is knocking on your door. In the case of maybe other another student athlete that you're, the, a school is recruiting, they drop out. They decide to go to another school. And now that offer that a, a school was waiting to give you until that other athlete decided, now that they're out, out, of the, out of consideration, now they offer you a scholarship. So I know it, it may seem like, you know, politics and college recruiting, you know, an election, like what do they have in common? What they have in common is that a lot, a lot can happen in a very short period of time. But what you have to do is you have to put in the work. You have to have the systems in place. You have to have the strategy in place so that when you get lucky, when that opportunity arises, you can seize it and you can keep carrying that momentum. Now, it remains to be seen if Joe Biden can keep that momentum, that Joe momentum that he's calling, calling on. But maybe you, student athlete, mom and dad, maybe you got that first call from a college coach. Maybe you got that first offer from a college coach. Maybe you got that first invitation to attend a junior day and you're excited. Keep building on, on that momentum. All right. So that's kind of my little monologue, if you will, today. And then lastly, speaking of voting, if you joined us last week, you know that you recruit you is part of the FedEx small business contest. I'm sorry, small business uh, grant contest. FedEx is hooking it up for all the small businesses out there, the startups like you recruit you who um, who really want to try to get the business off the ground and they want to you know make an impact um, in, at the same time. And the first place winner uh, receives a fifty thousand dollar grant. Second place winner receives a thirty thousand dollar grant. Um, and then you got ten third place finishers who each receive ten thousand dollars. And you can do whatever you want with the grant, but you know part of what we're trying to do with you recruit you is you want to start a foundation. Um, so, and the foundation is going to help you know we award college bound student athletes with scholarships. We want to help um, you know economically disadvantaged families uh, afford tutors and SAT, ACT coaches for their student athletes. Uh, we want to be able to do free workshops. Uh, for school districts and work with the athletic departments. So there's a number of things we want to be able to do. And last but not least, certainly not least, you know, again, a big part of what we do is the one-on-one -on -one coaching with families. Well, obviously that costs money. There is a fee for, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching and, and whatnot. Well, we realize not every family is able to, 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 uh, to afford our services, even though it is pretty reasonable. We recognize that, you know, groceries or, you know, a college recruiting coach. It really does come down to that for some families. 
And we definitely want to be mindful of that. So through the foundation, we definitely want to uh, allow families to, you know, apply for our free coaching if they qualify um, due to financial limitations. So I just need you to do one thing for me, right? In the show notes, you can go over to you recruit you.com forward slash full ride. So that's you recruit you.com forward slash full ride. That's today's show notes. You will see a picture of me with a link. You click that link and you can vote for us. Number two, you can go to our Instagram page or our Twitter page. It's you recruit you. So Instagram, Twitter, you recruit you, all one word. The link is in our bio. You can click on that link and then you can vote. Um, and here's the thing about this contest. It ends March 8th and you're allowed to vote once every 24 hours. So you can actually vote multiple times. But what can really help what can turn your one vote into 100 votes, your 100 votes into possibly 500 votes is if you take our link and then you share it on social media or you text it to, you know, you text it to a family and friend and you say, hey, you know, you recruit you. I love what they're doing. I like their mission and I want you to support it. Here's a link. Vote for you recruit you. But if you have any questions about how to vote, if you really want to try to help us out, Feel free to email me, coachkito at gmail.com, coachkito at gmail.com. But again, I just promise you, if you just go over to our website, yourecruityou.com forward slash full ride, go to our Instagram page, our Twitter page, you recruit you, uh, or in the show notes, you know, on your mobile phone. If you scroll down, if you listen to this on the Apple podcast, there's going to be a link. Click that link and it'll bring you to it. But I've talked long enough. I really want you to get to, uh, to my interview with Malik Nichols. Um, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really helpful to you. I encourage you to take notes, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Malik, how are we doing tonight, my man? I'm, I'm good, man. How you doing, man? How's good. everything? Can't complain, and it's, it's crazy. Uh, so before we start, I'll just share with the audience. So I know Malik. Uh, we are both, again, uh, 518 kids uh not mm-hmm. kids anymore but <laughs> 518 <laughs> and uh like myself Malik played um you may have played other sports I'm not sure but I know for a fact uh Malik played basketball and football uh yeah. at Albany Academy um and my first experience competing with Malik was in uh my senior year sectionals uh, we made it to wow. the, the championship game, and you and I think TJ or PJ, I remember, Conti, I know his last name was Conti. Yeah, and Conti. A couple Clark, of you other. Devon Wembley. Yeah, yeah, Wembley, that's right, Wembley, a couple of them yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah, my, my brother, yeah. Yeah, anyway, uh, we're not going to go too deep into this, but those guys uh, snatched, they snatched the sectional championship game. Uh, away from us. So we lost the sectional championship to Auburn Academy. Malik and I didn't compete um, in football against each other. However, our senior year, we were both, um, you know, honored with, you know, as top performers in the area. We made the the Capital Region, um, the Senior Bowl, you know, the, you know, the all-star game for seniors. But unfortunately, because of Yep. You know, upstate New York weather, it was a huge snowstorm and they had to cancel it. So we got our certificate and all that fun stuff, but we never got to actually play in that game. Um, but now, let's see, that was oh, 1997. So yeah, 20, yep. 20 something years later, come full circle. My man is now joining me um, to to talk about college recruiting because Malik did and I'll let him share it, go on to play in college. Uh, so he has some great insight there. And, and now currently, uh, Tariq has a son, um, not Tariq, Malik, excuse me, has a son, yeah. Tariq, who plays, um, he goes to Michigan football. So we're talking Big Ten football. Uh, and obviously, um, Malik has some great insight 
on, you know, the lessons he learned, you know, helping his son navigate college recruiting. Um, and he was able to get a full athletic scholarship to attend Michigan. So great show lined up for you. Uh, Malik, thanks again for joining us. And now yeah. I want to just kind of stop talking and ask my first question. And that is, when did you know you wanted to play sports in college? Oh, man, that's a first, man. I appreciate me. Uh, appreciate you letting me on the show tonight, man, and, and looking forward to it. So um, the first time, you know, thinking about college football, man, I mean, growing up in, you know, downtown Albany, uh, to Lincoln Square, you know, and, I mean, right off of, you know, hanging out on Green Street and, and growing up in that area, you know, for a lot of us, you know, having an opportunity to play in college and seeing, you know, a lot of the watching games and reading about these players. And back then, magazines and newspapers was huge, right? I mean, so we didn't have social media. So a lot of the information we was receiving, you know, it was directly out of Sports Illustrated and all these things. And, you know, always had that aspiration, want to play professionally, didn't know what was going to end up, you know, uh, didn't know what sport. I know I was going to give myself a chance in basketball and football. But um, I think once I got to playing Pop Warner and then getting a chance to go to Albany Academy and just being exposed to the school itself in regards to how important, you know, uh, academics is and how many kids are going off to college just without even playing sports. and and that's when I realized, like, hey, I can go here, and even if I don't play a sport, I can still get to school. But it, it actually sets me up and puts me at least in an academic path for me to be able to play college sports. So, um, I mean, it started back, man. I mean, going back to probably about, you know, 11, you know, 10, 11 years old is when, the, you know, the passion started to burn. And, and then didn't really realize it was uh, an option until I got to high school. Now, so you played basketball and uh, football like me. and I don't know if you felt this way, but I actually thought for the longest time, because I had a love-hate relationship with, with football, and I won't get into it tonight. Anyone who's listened to previous mm -hmm. episodes knows I quit football like th on three different occasions, going back to Pot Warner, then Modified, and then, you know, my freshman year in college, I mean, high school, I quit again, and it wasn't until my junior year when I went back out for the team. So I had a love-hate relationship with, with football always, but basketball was always that sport that I, I loved. It was my constant. Um, and I always thought I was going to play college basketball, um, but I learned quickly um, that, you know, shooting guards who can't shoot don't really have much of a, uh, <laughs> much of a chance of playing yeah. in college. And, and also, though, you know, I, I realized my high school coach actually pointed this out for football. He said, hey, man, like there are six, three shooting guards, athletic shooting guards are a dime a dozen, but six, three. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wide receivers with speed, those are highly coveted. Uh, so that really was what set me apart, you know, what put me on that path to football was because that's where I had the most interest. What was your story yeah. like as far as, like, being able to say, you know what, I want to really kind of push in my chips in on, on football? Yeah, so it, it, very similar to yours, you know. You know, I, I grew up a huge basketball fan, you know, and, and I thought I was going to play for the Knicks growing up, but you know, I was, you know, six one and a half, six two, if you look at any of the old time unions, you know, but you know, from that standpoint I, I realized what my strengths were. And once I started playing football, I just had a deep passion for it. I was playing with my best friend, my best friend Devon Wimbley and Keanu Burden and it's kind of in a Gene Robinson and growing up with them and you know, the game really gave us an opportunity to to leave Lincoln Square to be able to get it to go into a school like Albany Academy and get that experience. So like that really was, you know, that 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 time and that drive, and and then once you start having a little bit of success in it, you're like, hey, okay, I'm I'm not actually that bad, you know. When coaches start to recruit you, so it was right around that. I would probably say that, you know, sophomore year of high school, you know, they start playing at the high school level, and you start, you know, you start dominating, having some great games, and then it all starts to click, and then that first school that starts to show a little bit of interest and starts sniffing around, you're like, oh, you know, you might have some here, so. You know, I think that's where a lot of that really took off for me, you know, um, you know, at that point. And now I struggled initially, you know, really being able to tell when a college coach was actually recruiting me versus when they were just kind of just sending me a bunch of letters in the mail, you know, fishing. Mm -hmm. Can you just describe, um, you know, for you, and then we're going to get into uh, Tariq in a little bit, but can you just describe, like, for you, like, how did you know? When was that turning point that told you, wait a minute, okay, like, things are progressing here. 
and they're really um, interested in in recruiting me, and they're not just sending me this these generic letters. Yeah, I mean, when back then, I mean, <laughs> it's crazy to say twenty years ago. Back then, like you're so old, but you think about today's day and age with social media, and we could talk about that whole aspect of, as far as how that. I see that as a tool and a resource in this day and age, if used properly. But then if you think back to what we were coming out, it was, you know, you're getting a couple letters and it wasn't even letters, it was questionnaires, right? Fill uh-huh. this out, you know, what's your height, your weight, you know, your areas of interest. And then you send it back to the school and then they'll send you some more information based off the question. And then you had coaches that were saying, hey, can I see some film? So we had to get the big VHS tapes, right? And you're taking those things, you're putting them in, in packages, and you fly them across the country, and you hope that the coach opens them up because he got probably about 100 of them, you know, sitting on his one desk from his re- main recruiting area, not just coming from the Northeast, let alone Albany, New York, right? So you kind of put all those components together and being in, in a state that was really under-recruited when it came to football in terms of respect of the – you know, outside of, you know, the rest of the football world in terms of the South and, and other big-time conferences, you know, it, it was tough coming from the Northeast. So when it was real is when, you know, a coach walked in that school and said, you know, I want to talk to you about an opportunity to come here and play on our team and get education. That's when it really started to click. You started to shake your hands with some of these individuals. And, you know, and, and I think that's when it, it really became real is when I had it. You know, you having those conversations and people say, hey, I want you to get on campus and come for a visit. And, you know, and that back then, that's, that's when it was real, and it wasn't. It wasn't no mistake about whether somebody how they felt about you because it took some time to come see you. Um, no, I love that, and I, and I mentioned this multiple times in the past. But it's about the time. Like, how much time are they investing in you? Whether it's a handwritten letter, like not a questionnaire, but like mm-hmm. a real genuine handwritten letter, or if they ask you for your schedule. They ask you about, you know, what tournaments, you know, maybe you play basketball or soccer or something like that. They may ask you what tournaments you're playing in. Um, mm-hmm. um, they, they, they call you, they text you, but then you just mentioned it. I think when they really start coming to your, and I loved it too, man. You talk about feeling like big man on campus. Mm-hmm. You'd be in class yeah. and all of a sudden over the, the intercom, Keto Delgado, please come to the main office. And everyone's mm-hmm. like, ooh, you in trouble? I'm like, actually, <laughs> that's a college coach. Yeah. Like, I felt real good about that. <laughs> but that's just, again, yeah. you know, because we really want to try to educate our families on, like, those those signs that a coach is interested in you. And it's mm-hmm. definitely when they, they walk in your school and they start, they, they shake your hand, they want to, like, they, they kind of want to look at you, uh, you know, face to face. Uh, and ask and ask those in, important questions. So yep. it all worked out for you. Tell everyone where you ended up uh, going to college, um, and what you know what made you you know decide the school that you decided to go to. Yeah, so I ended up um, ended up going to the University of Maine up in Orono, and so um, they were actually the first school that that offered me a scholarship, and you know so. Is that old adage, you know, one person, you know, as soon as they get that first offer, you know, other schools will follow. And so after that, we had a few other schools, but I wasn't, I mean, it got down to a point with me looking at, you know, my situation. I said, hey, I, you know, I don't know if I can afford to go to college, right? You know, how do I pay for this? You know, if it's going to be on me, I know I'm coming from this, you know, really good academic school. So, I mean, it came down to like looking at, okay, do I go into the, to the military if I don't get a scholarship or do I, go try to take out loans to go continue to play, to play ball in other places. And, you know, and that's where I was at that particular point in time. And, and as, you know, I was sitting on the, you know, we had a, a, a little game room area in our school. So I was sitting down there on the couch and um, one of the, one of my teammates came in and said, Hey, you know, coach wants to see you. It's the coach here, wants, you know, that flew in to see you. So my high school coach, you know, um, sent my teammates. So I went up there and, and sat down and talked to this coach. And he wasn't in the area to see me initially, um, um, uh, Coach Gilbert, and I was now coaching, you know, in the NFL. And so he came in and said, he said, hey, I was over at Bishop McGinn, and I was uh, talking to Coach Grasso um, and talking to some of his staff, and they, your name came up in the conversation And as far as somebody that I need to go see. And so, you know, I got recruited by word of mouth, and, you know, that's why it's always important, you know, to even tell my own children to make sure your name is right. You know, um, in, a, in the classroom, outside the classroom, because that came by word of mouth. And if I was running around here being a knucklehead, doing things I wasn't supposed to do, you know, um, that 
I wouldn't have, that referral wouldn't have came. And that referral changed my life um, as I know it today. And I, and I owe a lot, uh, you know, a lot to all the people that have been involved in that, in that part of that process. Wow, man. And earlier tonight, I was talking to Brian Hamer. He's from the Capital Region. He played basketball. He went on to get a full athletic scholarship. And he said, uh, back when he was playing, we had, he was going against some top, top talent in the Capital Region. Uh, and he said he got, quote, unquote, lucky because uh, he, when he was going against those, those athletes, you know, um, in the, his basketball game, the coaches saw him. So they weren't even there to recruit mm. him. They were looking, they were evaluating the other players, but he obviously played really well. And that's how he just got discovered. But now you're taking it to a completely different level. And I really need my student athletes to, to really marinate on that, on this thought. And that is the fact that it wasn't even Malik's high school coach. And I'm not saying he didn't have any role in, in helping him at all, but I'm just saying he was referred by another high school coach, someone he competed against who thought he was talented enough. Clearly he respected your game, the way you approached it. And I'm sure he appreciated the way you conducted yourself on the field. You were a good sport. Um, but then I, I, I'm putting words in my mouth, but maybe after the game, you shook his hand, looked, you know, just the way you conducted yourself that when yeah. a coach was there looking, you know, cause he valued his opinion. He said, no, you want to go check out, um, Malik Nichols and I think he may have mentioned my I don't know this for sure but because Maine did recruit me too and I always wondered how they discovered me and sure enough yeah. um, I had the OC now he's the head coach of McDonald um, oh yeah McDonald? yeah yeah yeah, he, yeah uh, no, New Hampshire that's oh no it wasn't Maine no, no, no I'm got, I got them mixed up yeah so no maybe but maybe he sent the unit New Hampshire coach over I don't know but either way I don't want to get sidetracked but it's so important um, student athletes that your reputation, uh, it shows up before you do. Uh, and you just never know who is, you know, who can advocate on your behalf. Um, so you want to make sure you're always respectful to your opponents. You're respectful to uh, the coaches that you go against. You're respectful to the referees. You just never know. You just want to know. You just want to make sure when somebody, you know, is asked to, is put in a position to elevate you, they're not going to, they do so without any hesitation. So I just love uh, that story. Um, so you accept the offer. Now I'm curious though, what do you wish you knew? Now, again, this is a while yeah. ago, but what did you wish you knew um, back then that you now know now about college recruiting? Oh, about college recruiting back then. Oh man, I, I I probably would have tried to found some resources, and, and I don't know if I would have asked big and bald and still, but I would have loved to be able to attend more exposure camps and and getting a chance to get on campus and get in front of some of these coaches. Um, because as you go through your career and even you get to Maine, Maine is I mean unbelievable place, one double A program. We got there, it wasn't a very good program. You know, by the time I left, I won. You know, our team won a championship. Um, my my uh, senior year, which I was able, blessed enough to be the co-captain, a great, great group of uh, men. And then the following year, they went back-to-back -back championships. And and so, but from that team, the reason why I bring the story up, and you, know, you, you could attest to this as well, thinking back to our de defenses and, and, and those folks, we had a run of players from a small 1AA school go off to the play in the NFL. And they played at a, at a really high level. Um, Lofa Tutupo is just one name to mention, you know, um, Massachusetts All-Star ended up leaving Maine and going to USC and playing there and getting drafted and going off and playing in the Super Bowl, Pro Bowl. And I bring that up because, you know, here goes a small 1AA school where all this originated. But I realized that, hey, I was a good enough athlete to compete at that next level. And I wish I would have more confidence in myself earlier. And I think mm -hmm. that would have probably changed my mindset of how I viewed sports and, and even how my work ethic i'm now i worked hard but i didn't i didn't really i really wasn't working as hard as hard as i possibly can to reach my potential that's just because i just felt like this is just where we were in that time and this is what the offers were and just some of those schools are just a far stretch from like a, you know to get an offer from syracuse would have been like you know i feel like getting an offer from alabama today you know back yeah. then and so 
you know, just knowing that having, having that ability and you don't learn it, you don't know that until sometimes it's late in your career. You know, I know for you, Keto, being a 6 three receiver, and you look at all these kids coming out nowadays, mm. I mean, you, 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 you do a time warp. <laughs> you mentioned just along with these same kids, and I watch you, he's an athletic man. You know, and so in the same way, I would look at myself and say, man, I'm not saying I would have made it, <laughs> but I said I, I could have probably put myself in a better chance to be able to live out that dream. You just touched on this, and I, and, I, and I really wasn't even expecting to go through this, but I'll, I'll uh, highlight that because you're so right. So in, this happens a lot with, with young athletes. So maybe you are, you have aspirations to play major Division I football or basketball, whatever your sport may be. And when that doesn't happen, you may still land in a, an incredible situation, but because mm-hmm. you were so caught up in going major Division I that you almost then, like, um, devalue your accomplishment. And I know I did. Like, so I went from, again, you know Bishop Gibbons, my graduating class, we had 64, yep. small school. We won two games my sophomore, my junior, two games my senior year. No one else, um, you know, on my team was getting recruited. Um, and I don't even know to this day, maybe we have a, a couple of, since I graduated 20 years ago, I, I don't want to brag, but like, I think we may have had like maybe three or four other kids go on to get, you know, some type of scholarship for football. And my point is, I actually overcame a lot and ended up getting a full ride to a one double A program. But at the same time, which by the way, and you know this because you follow it, like our conference now it's called the Atlantic 10, but back then it was, I think it was the any the Yankee conference or whatever it is. But yeah, yeah. at the one double A level, the Atlantic 10 is like the equivalent of the SEC in division one. Right. I mean, major football, right? Like, you know, every year you have to playoffs, at least four or five teams are making it from the Atlantic 10. And I'm going against, we're going against guys, like you said, you know, Jerry Azuma, who ended up going to the Bears, Brian Westbrook, who went to yeah. Nova, you know, um, Darren Sharper. Yeah, you know, yeah. and Mary. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're going, we're going to, we're battling these guys. But to your point, and I, I, we, we want, I'll, I'll get to the point quickly because I want to let you go get, you know, chime in. My mindset was I always thought, like, I didn't make it major division one. And I really didn't, like, appreciate, like, wow, man, you're still playing some really competitive football here against some really, you know, pro-level players. And I just never had the right mindset until, like, you know, my senior, you know, end of my junior, I kind of started to figure things out. But, like, I waste a lot of time you know, early on in my process. And so I guess my message, you know, to our recruits listening, that is, even if, again, shoot for you, whatever your goals are, shoot for them. But even if you don't, may not get exactly where you want, still be appreciative of the opportunity you have. And then just, and, 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 and approach, approach the opportunity uh, with, with the utmost focus, um, because I think it's going to serve you well. Uh, so I'm glad uh, you shared that. Um, and then lastly, before we get into, like, I really want to help our parents, you know, in the role, because obviously you played a big role uh, helping your son earn a full ride uh, to, to attend Michigan. Once you got to college, can you just kind of talk about, you know, what were some of the lessons you learned in college? Um, you know, do you think you were prepared to play uh, college football once you got there? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think from a mentality standpoint, I definitely think I was there, right? I, I think, like, I felt like I was going to come in, I was going to compete. Um, physically, I mean, I wasn't even nowhere close to where I, where I needed to be. And, you know, thank thank God for a redshirt year um, because <laughs> I went into school 170 pounds, right? I just came, you know, Keto, you said, you know, all state, this, that, and you know, newspaper, all these different awards. And, you know, and I go step on the college campus and, you know, I walk in that locker room and it, it, it's humbling. Um, when you're there with your, fr- you know, co- your freshman for the first couple of days, you're like, okay, you know, you kind of side yourself up against your, you know, your peers in, in terms of freshmen. And then when the upperclassmen come on campus and you start looking, you in the locker room, you're like, man, I'm in here with men, you know? And so, you know, just from a maturity standpoint, you know, a physical standpoint, I realized I, I, it was a lot of work I needed to, to, to really put in. And, and, and that's what I was, you know, was willing to, uh, to do and um, but yeah, man, it, that that was the biggest gap. The difference was, 
you know, I just, I just physically wasn't ready yet, you know, walking in, but mentally I felt like I was there. So, you know, your body got to follow your mind and, and, and vice versa. And then lastly on you, um, before we get to, uh, you know, more current college recruiting trends, because I know you really are engaged in this space as well, just not only from, um, you know, uh, your own son, but even what, like what, you know, with, with coach Harbaugh at, at Michigan, he really kind of has in the past, uh, really, you know, leaned on you to kind of be a resource to, to other families, which I think is awesome. But real quick, you know, for that freshman or, you know, that, that senior right now who's entering uh, freshman, right? I mean, entering college. Obviously, congratulations. Yeah. You're going into college. Um, and you, you, you achieved your goal. You, you, you're part of the club, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. what advice would you just overall advice would you give them to make sure they get the absolute most out of their experience? Man, great question. And the first thing I'm going to tell, you know, for those that are listening and that will be listening after this, you got to take care of them grades and academically set yourself up and put yourself on track. You know, when you get into college, you're going to be taking a lot of, you know, your, your foundational courses. And, you know, they're going to, you know, not going to throw a lot at you. You're going to be probably taking 12, you know, 13 credits, you know, 12, 14 credits, whoever it may be. But focus on them grades and get the highest possible GPA that you possibly can. And there's a reason behind the reason why I'm saying that is, is because as life moves forward, and you start to mature, you learn things about yourself, you go through different adversity, the classes are going to get harder. There's other things that are going to start coming in the way not just the work is going to get harder but you're going to have this thing called life and you're going to have this thing trying to figure it all out right and you're going to be going from you know a a, 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 a 18 year old teenager to being a young man and then you're going to walk out of school and and for a lot of us going to have to step into and do a lot of men things very very fast so taking care of your grades sets you up and gives you the best possible um, options there to to get ahead of uh, your academics I will I will take you back behind that and say, keep an open mind. When you get to college, you know it's always cool to hang out, you know, with your boys and stick around and things and people that you know, um, and that's great. Um, the one thing I will tell you is, the more you're able to adapt to college life, the better you're going to be prepared to adapt to the rest of the world. When you get out into the real world, everybody's not going to be an athlete, and everybody's not going to see things the way you want to see them. So when I got into school, you know, I started getting involved in you know, a couple of different groups got involved in the Black Student Union, started, you know, um, doing some things with them. I had some older mentors that I, that I leaned on and just kind of watched some of the things that they were doing. And, you know, before I knew it, I was a part of student government by the time I graduated as a senator. Like, things that I never thought I would even do, things I wasn't even considering doing in high school, I had a chance to do these on the college campus. And my network grew. I wasn't just the athlete, you know, the number, you know, one and the guy that's out there in the field running. It was like, hey, I'm coming to see my buddy. I'm coming to see my friend, um, someone I, I'm working on projects with. So, and those relationships transcend um, once, you know, even when the lights are off. So embrace the college atmosphere. Learn a lot about yourself. But if you stay on top of those books, I promise you, it puts you in the best possible predicament, predicament to, to really control your own narrative. And there's nothing I can add to that. And I'm not. I love what you just said. Thank you uh, so much for sharing. So, so far... Um, and, and honestly, I think we, you don't, we've done a good job, uh, if, I don't, if I may say so myself, covering some good ground. But, you know, we definitely have spent some time in the past. Um, I want to now yeah. focus now on the next 20, 25 minutes and, and really bring it full circle, uh, bring it into 2020, um, not only for the benefit of our current recruits, uh, but also, as importantly, for our parents. Because as I mentioned um, early uh, in the introduction, uh, Malik uh, has a son, uh, Tariq, who is a member of uh, Michigan, uh, just completed his junior year, I believe. Um, and clearly, if you're at Michigan on the full athletic scholarship, uh, you could play some ball. Uh, but with that, even though uh, Tariq is extremely talented, you still, a lot goes into to navigating that recruiting process uh, in today's day and age. So, I guess from a parent standpoint, I'll kind of ask you a similar question um, that, you know, but now from uh, Tariq's point of view, when did you know, um, you know, Tariq wanted to play um, in college and, you know, how, did you have a conversation with them? Um, like, how did you like, you know, 
at what age or, or was there a particular moment when you, you looked at him or he told you directly, like, hey, yeah, I, I really want to go to that next level. Can you discuss that conversation or what that moment was like? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I was blessed enough to be able to have um, Tariq um, come into my life along with my wife and, um, and, and, my, and my oldest son as well come into my life. And, um, you know, and I was in Connecticut and, you know, I had my daughter and, you know, um, met my wife and, you know, we kind of did the, the blended, you know, we did the Brady Bunch thing. But um, one of the ways that we met, and the reason why I bring this up, because it's going to tie into uh, your question, um, is that um, my, my daughter was getting her hair done and then I would go down and, and spend time with the boys and then do some things with them and play ball. And, and, and they were just passionate around this sports, man. They reminded them of like, like me. Uh, they reminded me of a lot of me and, and you know my friends growing up and just just com- competed at everything i mean it's like man who can brush the teeth faster like they competed at everything so you know that's the one thing that i noticed with Tariq at an early age was that he had this competitive drive in him that you know it, it never it never wavered as even as he transcended from going from playing a video game or playing hoops in the backyard to getting in the classroom and then competing in the classroom it was like you know, you got three kids in the house, and then we had to have deals like every kid can get an A. <laughs> you know, I'm like, we're gonna throw some cash at you, and it was consistent. You know, it was like everyone was trying to get their straight straight A's, and and and, and then you watch him transcend from that to getting onto the field and competing at that level and everything that he did and being a multi sport athlete. You know, I knew he had that competitive drive, and you know, one of the stories that I tell here is that you know, once he started playing pop one in football, my wife said, hey, if he's gonna play, you got to coach. He got to be close to the game because she wasn't really all about him playing football. And um, and I looked at the game as, a you know, as, as my life savior. So, you know, I said definitely we get involved. And so by coaching him throughout, it just – as soon as you put the ball in his hand, his first game, is, and then pop one, he scored like five touchdowns. And by the time we got to the third game, people were like, hey, I don't – you know, can we check his birth certificate? You know, and then that's when you started to notice, like, all right, something, something special there, and you kind of combine that with the work ethic and his drive. And I think he was around 11, yeah, around 11, 12 years old. And I, I asked him, I said, you know, do you want to be great or do you just want to be good? And he said, I want to be great. And I said, are you going to be dedicated? Do you want to be dedicated to doing all the things to be great? And this is a conversation that he was having with me back and forth. He said, no, I want to be great. I want to be one of the greatest. And I said, all right, as long as you take care of your grades and, and you do all and you continue to work hard, you know, my wife and I and our family, because it takes a village, we're going to give you the resources that you need to. To, to, to get to your, your goals. And from that conversation, it just never changed to even getting his first scholarship offer as a, you know, as a freshman in, um, in our high school. So, you know, it's, you know, some things you just see in kids and it's like, they're going to be successful no matter what, but if they put their focus in one area and, and what he did, you know, obviously with football, you know, it was, you know, wasn't surprised of, 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 of that he would be successful, but kind of shocked of how everything just kind of took off for him. No, I love that. And now, and this is important because obviously not every 10 year old, 11 year old has that kind of, that appetite for competition. Yeah. Uh, so part of this is um, not every kid is going to be a Tariq, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think a lot of parents, you, we do have to, and I say this really respectfully, uh, you can't want it more for your, your son yeah. or your daughter than they do. So did you ever have to like drag Tariq? you know, to, 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 I'm sure he worked out. He, he did, he did a lot of stuff on his own. You know, can you just kind of walk us through, you know, how hard, you know, was he working, you know, um, on his own? Like what was he doing uh, to improve his yeah. game um, compared to his, um, you know, his, you know, his, you know, his peers? Yeah. So it, it was one of those things, man. I, you know, I, I said I was going to support you, but I needed to see action. And I wanted to see how many times I would have to tell him to do something. And it got to a point, man. I mean, it was a run. I mean, I mean, for, <laughs> you know, up until he got done with high school, pretty much it was like, you know, I need a ladder. Okay, let's go get a ladder. All right, I need this. He's, he's on the internet searching things that he wants to kind of to better himself around speed. We got parachutes. We got, you know, it was all type of stuff coming in the house. And this, a lot of it was coming off of his research. You know, and so I said, all right, I see you research. All right, so let's let's work on this together. So he was bringing a lot of this to me because I didn't want to be the helicopter fan. I didn't want to, you know, be the one to say, you know, I'll force him out there on the field, you know, just kind of let it, you know, take his course. 
And um, and he really drove a lot of that initiative. And that's the one thing advice I can tell you to parents. Um, you know, if your kid is showing that initiative, showing that drive, and, and they're doing all the things outside of the game to to make sure that they're, you know, they're able to play the game. And you know, and parents, you know exactly those things I'm talking about, whether it's, you know, doing the right things in school, being respectful to the elders and all that other stuff. And, you know, you see that you got to support them and you got to be able to put the resources in front of them as much as you possibly can to, to be able to give them the opportunity because, you know, I, I think those are the ones that you want to definitely attach to. But to Keto's point, I've seen it happen where parents wanted it more than the kids. And I've watched college coaches, you know, scream, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I've watched parents scream at college coaches, you know, and then they have an honest conversation with the coach. And the coach is like, your son didn't want to practice. <laughs> you know, that's the most humbling thing as a parent. You're sitting in front of 100,000 and you're like, you know, why are these things happening with my kids? And it's like, well, you know, your kid's not doing those things to put themselves in a position, you know? So, you know, when you hear those types of stories, you know, it's, it, it, it's tough. Um, as a parent because you want it so much but at the same time it's your kid's life and um, but if they got that passion and drive behind it whatever that they may be doing whether it's sports or whatever it may be um, you know continue to support them and, and invest in them when you possibly can. No, I love that and now so let's get to the nuts and bolts right you get to I mean he said he got freshman year he got his first offer um, again which isn't normal which isn't normal <laughs> for most of you, for most of our <laughs> listeners, but now, all right. So now, as a family, wait, he's busting his butt in the classroom, uh, working yeah. out, working on his craft, all that great stuff. And you know, honestly, at the end of the day, uh, there's really nothing more that needs to be said. You know, from Malik and I on that, like your kid has to put in the work in the classroom, uh, and in the on the court, on the field, on the rink, on the track, whatever. But now from a pure strategy standpoint, right, now you want to start, you know, getting those opportunities to hopefully play in college, getting those offers, getting the attention of coaches, keeping their attention, uh, and then successfully navigating uh, college recruiting. So walk us through what role did you play in, in all this? How did you, you know, for those parents listening, you know, what advice would you give them um, purely now strategy? Right. I'm not talking about, you know, support. I'm talking about strategy, you know, again, now in 2020, you know, our time was 1990. So that's a long time ago. But in today's terms, given today's yeah. atmosphere with huddles, social media, all that, um, because you're not far. This is three years ago, four years ago for you. Uh, so what strategy yeah. would you would you really want to uh, share with our, our parents? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I know for a lot of us, social media may not be come to us uh, as easy as it may to the others. Um, get familiar with the social media platforms, um, Twitter, uh, Instagram, or, or two that I will call out, um, because that really was the avenue that we utilized to, to promote um, Tariq. And, and being able to take a video from him working out for a couple of days and, and then be able to put that together and then literally reach out to a coach within seconds um, to share that video, um, to put his name on their radar. And it was a lot of man hours going into that. But you have, you know, we really, from a strategy standpoint, you've got to bring brand awareness. I know your kid, you know, your kid may be great, you know, in this particular section or in this particular class, and they're doing amazing. But there's, a, you know, hundreds of thousands of others, just like your kid in Texas, in Florida, in all these other regions. So don't expect people are going to want to come to you. So you got to go out there and be able to seek the opportunity and then put your, and, and again, share, share these, you know, share those videos and share those things about your kids. Um, but also at the same time, it's just not just about football. Talk about how they are in the classroom, you know, all those other components and, and, and make sure you have something prepared to talk about that because just as much as they, you know, they look for gifted athletes, they want to make sure they got the right person that they're putting into that university and they're putting a lot of investment behind your kids. So, um, you know, just as much as it is to promote that, you want to make sure you got the other side of it um, straightened out as well. Um, so outside of social media, I would definitely say, um, Real you know, quick, quick question, quick question, okay. because cause you said social media, so let's just stay on social media for a second. And I yeah. don't want to put words in your mouth. I just want to, but I think I heard you say this. So when you were, whether you're sending a DM to a coach or even this for analysis, say, you know, crawl before your ball, right. Or, you know, crawl before you, your run. 
for those parents who, okay, I want to just, we'll start up a, a Twitter page or an Instagram page for our student athlete. Well, yeah. it should be in their name, by the way. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. yeah, a yeah. lot of parents post stuff on their own personal. I'm like, no, put it on your son or your daughter's page. But now they started yeah. out. Um, what types of, did you only post, um, you know, his huddle link in the bio and just say, hey, guys, check out my huddle link? Or how did you, did you promote him mm-hmm. um, with, you know, just little small clips of games uh, of him working yeah. out. What did you, how did you said branding? So really like, again, let's drill down. How did you brand yeah. Tariq to college coaches via social media, particularly Twitter and Instagram? Yeah. So what we did was, I mean, we, I mean, he put the work in, we got the videos. So not just, just huddle videos. I mean, I mean, we did a lot of videos just showing him catching the ball, going through routes, footwork, footwork drills. Um, you know, ladders, um, cones. And so we put together, I mean, <laughs> we tried to put together a little mini documentary how many clips that we used to take. And then, you know, and then, you know, he would even record himself up at 6, 6 a.m. with, you know, a weight vest on and doing ladder work and running the hills by himself. And so we would capture a lot of those moments because, you know, and put and put together the package because, you know, the film tells just one component of it. But I mentioned earlier about the work ethic. And I think that's what we're really trying to showcase is that, the work ethic is real. And, you know, so if the work ethic matches what, you know, the results, then, you know, only can imagine what you're going to get as a college coach four years from now, you know, when you got a, you know, a grown man that's going to be approaching this in a, with a, even a more aggressive mentality. So yeah. those are some of the things that we put out. No, I'm really glad that you shared that. So, you know, we, a lot of times people think promote your son, promote your son. And it's, you promote an article. Well, again, it's, it's nice. Don't get me wrong, but the local paper writes an article on them on your son or your daughter, mm-hmm. you share that on Facebook. That's cool. Not, you should do that. Cause if it's any, any type of um, publicity is good publicity. Right. Um, you know, or, you know, again, you, you do the old, you know, look at my link and, you know, your huddle link of your, of your season highlights. And that's helpful too. You should do that. But from a standpoint of consistent, if you think about it from a standpoint of you're promoting a movie, right. You got the movie trailer. Um, but then once they release that movie trailer, you ever go to their, you know, their social media page, uh, you know, the actors will put little bite sized clips of the trailer or they'll take a, a screenshot from a scene and write this caption. They'll go on, they'll go on television and do interviews. They promote the movie over and over again. They don't just run one commercial. And that's how we have to approach this as a recruit. You can brand yourself in multiple ways. The highlight, your season ending highlight is the movie. But in the meantime, you can literally build interest by just putting 30 second, 45 second clips of you working out over and over again in different drills, showing your athleticism. Um, and it doesn't even have to be just, um, I, I saw this from a coach. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I want to let you hop back in, um, Malik. But also, though, I saw from a coach, he said, who's a football coach, he's like, hey, guys, don't just post your, your, your game film, but if you play basketball, mm-hmm. post a video of you dunking the ball because it shows that you can yeah. jump and you have athletic ability. So just really step outside your comfort zone. You have an amazing platform. That, oh, by the way, is free. All you need is a, 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 a smartphone, which pretty much everyone has, and you record it. Now, did you use any apps or anything just to kind of drop that? You, you know, did you, is there an app that you would recommend, you know, for recording, you know, those little clips or did you just literally record it on your phone and then just mm. upload it? Yeah. So some of the stuff was on the phone uploaded and then there was another app that was called like Splice um, that we ended up using. And, um, and it was another, I, I forgot the name of, of the other app that I'm drawing yeah. a blank on, That's but okay. there, there was a few different, there's a bunch that are out there and, um, Find the one that's easiest to use and that's free. You shouldn't have to go out and go pay for it. <laughs> exactly. So. I like that you just said free. Uh, so a lot of this yeah. is, is the parent take that time to record it uh, and then, you know, put it on Splice. Uh, you got um, InShot nowadays you can use or you can just even upload it straight to, you know, the Instagram or the, to Twitter. Uh, so that's awesome advice. So now, though, what role did you play – because obviously we all know coaches want to hear directly from the student athletes. So at what point in time, though, did you really 
engage with the coaches, you know, because obviously, you know, once you start talking money and offers, you kind of want to play a role. But at the same time, you don't yeah. want to jump. You don't want to, you know, inject yourself too early in, into that process. So what is that fine line? Yeah. So, um, I mean, my wife and I were, were, were right there every step of the way, you know, and having a conversation with coaches. Um, there were certain times where I would let her take the lead and talk to some of the coaches and I would take the lead with other coaches. You know, you got kind of a lot of stuff coming in, you know, at that particular point in time. But um, I think it's important to be a part of this conversation because you want to understand, you know, um, what are the things that they're telling you, you know, your, your kid? And, 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 and then can you hold them accountable to the things that they're saying? Um, so those are a lot of things that you, you know, you want to be a part of those conversations early. Um, you want to hear how things are being kind of, are being positioned. It's very easy as a parent for all of us. And for those that are going to go through this for the first time, you're going to be wild, right? And then you're going to be caught. I mean, for me, you know, think about it, you know, growing up, you know, playing football and then having a chance to go to Notre Dame and, and touch the, you know, touch the sign and go run out on the field, you know, and like I'm looking at my family and looking at them like I'm crazy. I'm like, you have no idea. And so as a parent, you can get really caught up in the hype. And so you just kind of buy everything that someone is, is selling. But you got to be able to, you know, separate that to be able to ask the tough questions. Um, so that's the thing that I can harp on parents. Find a way to be able to separate that. I know it's going to be an amazing opportunity, amazing time. Go see some amazing places. But you got to be able to find a way to separate that to be able to ask the questions that you need to get asked um, regarding your kids' well-being. Um, and, and that's the most important thing I can, I, I can tell you there is, um, you know, because a lot of times the first time we go around, it's, you know, we, we, we all get caught in the hype. I love that. That I never even thought about that, but you're so right because, because you no, know, when I you did get recruited, um, just like I did, but mm -hmm. even still, my recruiting experience I wasn't going to these big time schools, and we didn't have, you know, put on the jersey like it is now. When you put on the jersey and you take the photos, and like it's just different now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't, there was no Twitter, there's no social media. You know, talking about blessed to and you know to receive my tenth offer, all that stuff. So you didn't have that, um, but so. So I can only imagine, though, the point you just made, parents who, A, were never recruited athletes, or if they were recruited like you and I, our experiences were totally different back then than it is now. And now all of a sudden you're kind of going through this process with your son or your daughter, and it really is easy to kind of get swept, swept up in, you know, all the, you know, the extra stuff that these programs do now for your student athlete. And they make you really feel super – you know, important, which you, which you are, but still like they, you know, they say some stuff and I think the best thing you can do as a parent is, you know, obviously stay informed, advocate on your son and daughter's behalf when necessary, ask those tough questions, but then also just really not get consumed and caught up in the, in the hype of recruiting. Um, because ultimately your son and daughter, they do need you. The best thing you can do for them is to be that support structure so that when all the dust settles, you can help counsel them uh, towards a, a good decision. So, um, no, I, I think yeah. that's crazy. Like, I'm running on Notre Dame and I'm getting a sign. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> no, you're, you're, right? totally, you're totally right. You're, you're totally right. Is there anything, I mean, we've, we've talked a lot. Is there anything you just kind of want to add just in general without even a question like this, something I may have missed or, you know, whether it be for a recruit going through this right now or, you know, uh, a parent, like just some pitfalls to avoid, like just anything just in general that you just kind of yeah. uh, want to talk about? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess I, I, I'll leave with this here is that, you know, I, as you go through this process, no matter what sport it may be, um, you know, just always keep it centered around why we're here, right? And so it's important because, a lot of us are not going to get a chance to go off and play professionally. And, you know, you hear Keto and I kind of, Keto and I talking tonight about our, our glory days, you know, you know, how things, what we could know now, what we could have done, you know, to, today. Um, but it's around the education. And it's important that you're able to get that education and, and, and utilize those networks that you're going to build outside of the sports. Um, because I promise you, when you get into the real world, you're going to meet people from all different walks of life. You're going to interact with a lot of different people. And not everybody's going to be a fan of athletes. Um, there are going to be some people that will love athletes and love the, the things that we can bring to the table. And there are going to be some that say, hey, I have to pay my way through school. And so, you know, don't lose track. Uh, sorry, don't lose focus on why we're here, 
let's get this education, get this degree. And if sports, you're blessed enough to be able to play um, professionally or whatever that may look like for you, um, then great. Um, but for those that are not, it's all good. You got a great career out. You got some great stories. Uh, you build some unbelievable relationships, friendships. Uh, I mean, Peter and I, I mean, you know, we went to two totally different schools, but sports was that one link that brought us together, you know, and even playing against each other in college and, and then having a relationship now. And so, you know, those are the types of things that, you know, as you go through this experience, um, get the education and enjoy every minute of it because it goes by so fast. Man, I, I, I <laughs> it, it, it literally felt like, you know, three just went to school and then now he's going to be turning around and graduating here, you know, in this upcoming, you know, in this upcoming May and, and then how fast it goes. And, you know, so just enjoy every moment. Find that time and opportunity to embrace it. Um, even at, at the high school level, um, at the, at, you know, at the, 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 you know, middle school level, just enjoy the moment. Just watching your kid have fun um, and, and, and encourage them to have fun because, you know, no one from the pros is looking at their, you know, eighth grade tape right now. So <laughs> let's go out and have fun. I'm just learning the fundamentals, be a good sport and, um, and press forward. But, um, I know I spoke a little bit around that, man, but I, I can't harp it enough, man. Have fun, um, enjoy it, stay focused. Um, and parents, you know, whatever you can do to support your kids, um, be there because it means a lot. You know, whether they're, you know, scoring 30 points or they're not even getting in the game, um, it, it, it all it all matters. And those are the things that stick out to, to them for the rest of their lives. That is uh, some sound advice, my man. I really appreciate you uh... – Hopping on uh, real quick, though, because, you know, we have a couple of minutes. I want to ask you one question because I always tell this. I always ask former athletes this. And maybe it's going to be yes, maybe it's going to be no. I don't know what your answer is going to be. But how often, you know, when you talk to whether, you know, because, again, obviously you're successful and, you know, um, in, you know, post, you know, in your career, professionally, all that stuff. But whether you're talking to people, friends, um, or when you go in on previous job interviews or you're, you're talking to your coworkers or you're helping a client and somehow, you know, some, the fact that you played in sports comes up, how often does someone say, ask you what division Maine was? <laughs> um, you know what? It doesn't happen often because I put it out there in the forefront. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know <laughs> For the most part, you know, they kind of look at it like Maine, and like I'm like, yeah, it's you know, small one double A school up in the in the Northeast, and that that's normally how it how it happens there. But um, but but to your point, I think where you may are trying to go with that, um, you know, it 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 it, it never it, it doesn't always come up. Um, you know, when people look at your resume, and you're having conversations with people, they make that connection with you that you were you know an athlete and um and a collegiate athlete, so they they, they get the things that you've gone through. Yes, exactly. I think ultimately I, what I was trying to, to get to, and I didn't want to coach you up, so I would I want I want an honest <laughs> answer. But I'll just be honest, for me, like it, it rarely ever comes up. They say, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. How was it? They want to hear some stories, but they never say, Oh, what division yeah. was that? You know, did you play they, they don't they don't really care. What they really care about are the lessons I mean the experiences yeah. that I, I took from it and then they want to see then whether it's an employer or or whoever, a client. They want to know mm-hmm. how I can now help them. Because ultimately, they're like, they're like yeah. I don't, that's cool. Like, I don't really, really care what you did 15 years ago. It's like, what can you do for me? <laughs> and they're, yeah. they're, most, they're most interested in your lessons and the, the value that you can deliver. Uh, and I think that's yeah. just really important for our, our recruits to listen, to, to really understand that ultimately, 20 years from now, and again, I'm not saying don't go for the D1 offers. Go for it. I mean, crap if you can do yeah. it if you can play at that elite level and that's your goal well put your head down and go to work not discouraging you but also i don't want you to fall into the trap of being disappointed in your accomplishment of only mm-hmm. quote unquote playing d2 of only playing juco heck of only playing two years at juco that's still a great accomplishment um and it's yeah. an accomplishment you should be really proud of uh, so that's what we have for you this week. Malik, my man, I appreciate you uh, for hopping on. Um, and to all of our other families, as always, uh, you can head on over to yourecruityou.com, yourecruityou.com for show notes. Please uh, give us a follow also on Instagram and Twitter. It's just at you recruit you. Um, but until next time, this is your recruiting coach, Quito Delgado. 
reminding you that college recruiting starts with you. What steps are you taking today to earn an athletic scholarship tomorrow?